And welcome back. Now today we're at my soldering station because there's a couple of tips I want to share with you. I thought we'd take a break from the coding and web pages and stuff like that. So we're going to talk about how we're going to desolder chips off a PCB, either for reclamation or because you made a mistake, or because the chip is foobar. Also, how are we going to join two bits of wire together uh, and make a really good job of it? I just thought I'd share these tips with you, so hang on to your hats. I want to give a big shout out to PCB Way, PCB prototype, the easy way. Now, we're all well aware of the $5 for 10 pieces PCB, but I've got some real practical examples that I've ordered recently. Let's have a look at those. So here we have a very small double-sided panelized board that enables me to create a tiny little display unit. Look at that. How cool is that? And at the other end, look at this pond controller. Mains voltage, absolutely wonderful. That looks pretty cool too, doesn't it? And that's been running for some time now. Yeah, PCB Way has excellence in their PCB department, but that's not all they do. Look at this. Just look at their products and capabilities. Apart from printed circuit boards of all types, they do PCB assembly, double-sided, through-hole, surface mount, you name it, which means you can design a prototype for yourself or your company and have it assembled by PCB Way for the cost of the shipping. And if you want some 3D printing done, these are the people to do it for you as well. PCB Way. Why don't you try them out now? So the challenge then is if I wanted to desolder these chips on here, um, or even worse, a quad flat pack, which is, you know, 8 by 8 by 8 by 8 all the way around, how do you desolder these off without damaging the board, without damaging components next to them, and uh, ideally, if you wanted to reuse those chips, not damaging those. Now, you could use a heat gun, as I have here. This is a heat gun. And I've got a gazillion nozzles to uh, fit that as well, by the way. So let's have a look at those. So here are the nozzles that I've got that just slide on the end of this, because this is a bit a, of a blunt instrument, isn't it, to use on those delicate circuits. Now, these little ones, of course, target the hot air. To the right place but these ones if you notice the hot air only ever comes out of those tiny little slits there so ideal for quad flat pack when they work and that one's for a slightly bigger one and that one just blows out hot air in the middle now they're they're pretty good i've used them uh, reasonably successfully in the past um, but i think there's a better way of getting stuff off not cheap though i must say not cheap but then again when you have to you have to don't you so let's um let's have a look at it so this is the stuff and although you can find this just about anywhere it's about 20 pounds 16 to 20 pounds for a little tiny coil you can sometimes get it called desoldering alloy so it's not the brand or name but it's probably the same stuff but it's it's not particularly easy to use let me explain why so here's this alloy rolled up, which is the worst thing they could do, because this is very brittle. If I was to unroll this now, it would just snap. What I have tried in the past is to say, right, let's, let's warm it up a little bit. You have to be very careful because this melts at about 58 to 60 degrees. Yeah, it's, it's pretty low melting. Um, very, very, very gently you can unroll this. If you just were to unroll this like it was solder, it would just snap. And I'm not going to do it because I've got enough bits lying about as it is. So this is the stuff and it melts really, really low temperature and stays molten for a long, long time. And I've used this very successfully, but as you can see, the, the roll is getting smaller and smaller. Um, I did have a problem with rs components i think selling me this they said oh no you're not a licensed whatever it is to buy leaded products although i don't think this is lead at all but uh, anyway they will sell it to me now but you can get it just about anywhere amazon sell this now as well and it comes with a little tiny thing of flux which um, we should really use you should put this on first before you desolder anything so if we were going to desolder these chips for example put a, a really nice layer of flux all around those pins, then get your soldering iron. I use about 300 degrees, 200 sometimes works, depends um, how dense and how big these 
pin legs are because it's going to suck the heat away. But uh, yeah, then put this on and mulch it, melt it all around. We'll do it on a quad flat pack chip like the Arduino 328. It's the same size as that. Let's um, let's have a go in a second, shall we? So I've got some of the solder here. In trying to unravel it, it snaps off. I told you it was delicate stuff, didn't I? So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to put some of that on there like that on one side and um, just melt it on, really. I don't know what temperature to put it on. I've got it on the 200, which is a bit low for solder, but not this stuff. I think I might um, increase the temperature actually up to 300. 300, there we are. I think that might help. Um, right, I've got to get this on all sides so, and for it to remain molten on all sides. So it should have dis melted the solder and kept molten in itself. Keeping molten is not the issue. Melting the underneath solder might be. Um, And you can see it's still molten even while I'm doing that, so it's quite weird, isn't it? Hmm. I think one of the lessons we're learning here is keep the board nice and level. Right, there we are, there it is, and it's off. And of course the board underneath is still nice and intact. We can clean that up with a bit of braid or something. So the thing we learned there is to use a bit of flux and uh, just keep going round. Let's um, try it on this other chip then, as we've got one here, and see how well that works. Right, okay, so I've put some flux on there. As Lewis Rossman says, you can never have too much flux. So we'll, we'll put some of this on. Make sure we get it on all the pins. I don't know if it has to be bridged or not. I'll just put, oh no, there we are, look. and it's off. Superb. Now you couldn't do that without using this stuff because it just solidifies by the time you get round. But this this stays liquid for absolutely ages. Not cheap though. So I'm just partially cleaning up the board with basically flux and um, braid. Braid incidentally is not cheap either, probably because it's made from copper. But uh, yeah. Anyway, so that's cleaning up nicely. I just I'm just looking at the camera and it looks a real mess, doesn't it? Um, and it, believe me, it's not. So I'm going to use one of these horsehair brushes that I've cut down a little bit to make it a little bit more stubby. And uh, some flux, not flux, IPA. And it's, no, it's not the beer. No, we keep saying that, don't we? It's not the beer. Right, we're going to use some, some of this IPA here. And just sort of, as the board's tilting anyway, and was insistent on making the solder go that way, let's wash it off that way. There we are, look. I mean, that's, that is almost done. Okay, could do with a little bit more cleaning. It is absolutely essential to remove all that quick chip stuff, though. Absolutely essential, because that is not solder. And if you try and solder it again... That component it just it just doesn't work here's here's the one we took off and as you can see that's still got all bits of well whatever that alloy is in between the pins and they must be absolutely cleaned off quickly you don't want to damage the chip if you're going to reuse it but they must be removed 100% pretty much as we've done off the board there which I think is is a good result from what I can see there and one final thing, when we desoldered that chip and pushed it off, the molten alloy, that quick chip, just sort of fell off in a big splash and solidified on my mat. Well, we can actually reuse this, given how expensive it is. I can just put this back in the little container there and melt that back onto another chip when I want to do it, because this is not solder. OK, there might be some solder in here now, but not enough to worry about. And that will rework. I've done that before as well just to make it go a little bit further, you know. Waste not, want not, as they say. So here we have a couple of cables that have been joined together with this heat shrink over the main join. 
Uh, but there's something special about this particular heat shrink that I think I wanted to share with you. So let's assume we want to join the two ends of this cable together and see how we do that. So we have our two ends prepared. Now most people I think would just put these together, twist them, stick a bit of heat shrink on and, and call it a day. And I've done that many times. So yeah, let's, let's try that and just see how we can improve it. So they're twisted together, laid flat. I now solder those and um, then put some heat shrink on to protect them and give them a bit of strain relief. That's what we're looking for. Insulation and strain relief, really, so they don't uh, you know, get put under pressure and pull apart. Now, as you can see here, I have a whole huge box of heat shrink, all different uh, diameters. I think this one came from uh, Lidl in the UK. Lidl, as they say. Uh, and it's very good. It's, it works fine. So let's let's try one of these and then find out how we could have done it better. So I'm just going to solder this together first. I'm only doing this, this quickly really just to show that it does work. Well I've got the temperature of the iron set to about 300. That'll do for just for this. Right, we'll just assume that's that's a, a properly soldered joint, yeah? Now, obviously, if we were to leave it like this, A, it would short out against something, and B, it's not that strong. The weak point is where the solder ends at the base of that solder, so the rest of it's all right, but, hmm. So let's put some heat shrink on and see if that improves things. So here's the heat shrink, and that just sort of slides over, get it more or less in the middle. Fine, we... we could do it like that, couldn't we? And then heat shrink this on and that would be it. Hmm. There's a better way of doing it though now. So I've got this heat shrink now and as it says in big red letters that I wrote on, this is the adhesive stuff, yeah, and it shrinks four to one. The standard heat shrink, non-adhesive, normally shrinks two to one. So that yellow one only shrinks half the size. This shrinks four times as small, which means you can have bigger pieces to fit more things and it'll still fit. Let's let's try one of the ones on that piece of wire, shall we? So this is the smallest diameter I've got there. Now, as you can see, it's pretty big. It's going to fit over a lot of things, isn't it? But if you look inside, you can probably just about work out. Now, I can't focus that close on my camera. This is my phone we're looking at at the minute. Um, there's a, a layer of where well, it sort of looks like varnish inside, but that's the sticky stuff. So let's put this on and see how well it works. There it goes. Right, I'm heating this up then with my heat gun now. I've got it set to about, well, it's 162 I've got it set to. So let's heat that up and see if it shrinks enough. I think it might need a little bit more heat to make that uh, adhesive flow. So let's up it to about 200. Yeah, that's definitely sticky now inside. Very sticky. Not to mention hot. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well that's that sealed it. I mean, I can feel the stickiness. It's slowly hardening now. Um, I would have said that was probably a little bit too big that heat shrink for a single wire like this. The one I did it on over here was a double wire, as you can see, and that worked really, really well. In fact, you can still see just about some of the adhesive coming out of the end there. Yeah, and that one too. Look, you can see the adhesive. So you know that's totally waterproof. And, uh, well, very strong because it's now stuck to the wire as well. One word of warning, though. Quite often when I heat shrink wires like this, especially to connectors, I occasionally make mistakes and think, oh, let's just redo that. Cut it, you know, cut it off by just slitting the heat shrink, peeling it off and doing it again. You won't get away with doing that in here. Once that adhesive is solidified in there well that's it really <laughs> you'd, if that's wrong you'd have to chuck this away and do it again basically so yeah great job lovely and waterproof i could put that in a pond which is exactly what i'm going to do to the one that i made 
for my uh, pond pump. Okay, I hope you found those two tips worthwhile. Believe me, they've saved me on a number of occasions. Now, if you've got any comments, please do put them in the video below. Um, and if you like this sort of video, you know, it's practical, you learned something, give me a yay. Hey. That's the one. Yeah, because then the video is promoted to more viewers. And remember, if you like these sort of videos generally, uh, subscribe and ring the bell. You've got to do both as you won't hear from me ever again. And next week, we'll talk about web pages again. Maybe. See you then. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.